Welcome. This is Captain Dorja's Armory, and this is Captain Dorja. Right here, we're looking at the IS-7. This is a fun tank to play. I only own three tier 10s, and continuing the tier 10 trend from last last video where I played my E-100, we're gonna be doing the we're gonna be doing the tier 10 IS-7 this time. The IS-7 is pretty well regarded as one of the weaker tier 10s due to the low HP, mediocre armor, mediocre mobility, and mediocre gun. Uh, personally, I think it's my favorite tier 10 that I own. Between the E100, the IS-4, and the IS-7, I find the IS-7's armor is easy to employ, uh, especially in a map like Ensk or uh, Himmelsdorf, where the enemy comes at you from only one direction. You just point the armor straight at the enemy and watch their shells bounce. Uh, the gun is relatively mediocre, but with the IS-7, you're an aggressor. You want to be in close, and in close, this thing's gun is more than capable of performing. Uh, it's not quite as good as the gun on that IS-8 right there. That M62 gun is amazing, but you, you take what you can get, and the, this S-70 is still still pretty good. So anyway, let's take a look at the let's let's uh let's look at the match here. So here we go. Standard battle on Ensk. Ensk is one of my favorite maps due to the fact that A, it's a city. I like city maps. B, it's a small map. There's usually no shortage of fighting. I like fighting. And so, in this match, we're going to be playing pretty aggressively with the IS-7. This is a pretty good matchmaker for a Tier 10. The enemy team only has two Tier 10s, an E-50M and a Jagdpanzer E-100. So, as long as we don't stick our nose out in front of the Jagdpanzer E-100, we don't really need to worry too much about him. Now, after the two Tier 10s, they only have one Tier 9, a T-54 E-1, American tier 9 autoloader medium and then it's all tier 8s. The IS-7 basically has nothing to fear from tier 8s. So in this match we can afford to be pretty aggressive and there you see me donkeying and almost driving straight into a building. Now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to just park on this corner and we're going to put it, we're going to put our armor so that the right side of our pike nose isn't even showing to be shot at, and they can only fire at the angled left side. And you can see that Carnarvon has already bounced. But granted, he bounced off my lower plate. I fire back at him and I do no damage. Carnarvon bounces again. He hits the more sharply angled side and misses. And I'm taking aim at him. This is going to be a chancy shot, but he moves forward a little bit but I still don't think that's a very good shot. So I decide to look down the other aim. Nothing there, but the Carnarvon's pulled forward again. And I fire and do nothing. Right, this isn't really getting me anywhere. I want to be aggressive in my IS-7. That's what this tank is built for. So this T-54E1 wants to play, so I poke around the corner and put a nice damaging hit into him. 442 damage right there. You can see I took two more bounces off my upper plate. One from the T-54E1 and one from the Carnarvon. The T-54E1's gun only has about 220 pen, I think. At any rate, his pen is just not high enough. Against my front armor, he needs to be aiming at weak spots and shooting at the lower plate. And uh, just firing at me like that, it's almost guaranteed to bounce. So, what I've done is I've just seen that our base is under heavy threat from a T-44 and an E-50M, and we have a Tier 7 Light and a T-44 defending them. I roll in, kill steal the T-44, but that ends his threat. And I want to work this E-50M. He gives me a nice side shot, so I put a 550 damage hit on the hit. And again, E-50M is a good tank, but you don't want to be going one-on-one, -on -one, head-to-head, -head against it same tier heavy when you're in a medium. So I'm going to play aggressive and just go after this E50M. This T32 here is really trying to get into my way and that does not make me happy. You can see I just missed a beautiful shot on the E50 because the T34 had been, T32 rather had been slowing me down. 
So here we go, chasing the tier 10 medium with the heavy tank, not really a good idea, but he's locked into going straight ahead, so I know that I'm going to be able to do this, bam, right up the front pipe, 560 damage. The CP E50M knows he's screwed now, he's just, he's just lashing out trying to get away. He's uh, taking a lot of damage, just, the guy's just running now. T32 is chasing him in reverse. Pretty brilliant move, and our T-34 there just wastes the E-50M. Now, while I was making sure that we didn't lose the field, we lost the city. Our ISC-152 is making a valiant last stand against the Agpanzer E-100, the Lerva, and the light tank, but you can see the JPE polishes that guy off. Now, I've got a T-34 in front of me, and he's going to give me his turret side in the hull, so I will take that shot. And this 4502A over here, I'm I'm basically not worried about him at all. With only 200 pen, as long as I keep my front towards him, I can afford to turn the turret. He's never going to pen from that range. That's uh, three or 400 meters. He's never going to pen. Not with his weak gun. So the T-34 is still coming around. I'm mindful of the fact that we are losing the entire city, but what I want to do is I want to play aggressively. I almost want to act like a fast medium right here. I just want to get rid of this T-34. Just ASAP, get rid of him. So I ram him to make sure my next shot will kill him. And I back my butt up against the wall so that that 1375 can't flank me. You can see the 1375 basically can't penetrate my armor. I deal with the T-34 and now I'm going after the 1375. And you can see right here that he's missing and having trouble even penning. I'm I'm in almost no danger from his gun. I chase him around the corner and hit him for 578. Now, again, things aren't really going very well. Chasing down this 1375 is something that needs to be done, but it needs to be done quickly. There, there he goes, 1375 dead. Now, you can see that the enemy's 2801, the Yagpanzer E100, they're both over here. This was risky. I give the JPE my side, and I did it knowingly so that I could shoot at his lower plate. I was hoping that my one shot would kill him, but I left him on 39 health, and the T-34 comes in and kills, kills me. Now I had loaded an HE round to finish off the JPE, and I just fired the I just fire the HE round at the 2801, hoping it'll kill him or do more damage than it did, but you can see it only did about 100, and I put an AP round in and finish him off. <laughs> Excuse me. So now, we're gonna have to take a quick pause here because this match is just long enough. I only have the trial version of Bandit Cam. I can only form, I can only film uh, 10 minute long sectors. All right, so sorry about the annoying pause. Um, to pick back up where we left off, the enemy just has the T-54E1 left. You can see he was last spotted in uh, over in the rail yard and the 4502A. Now, as I was saying earlier, I'm basically not concerned with their guns at all. As long as I can keep them in front of me, neither one of them is any threat to my IS-7. So what I'm going to do is, as soon as I get my track back up, I'm going to go bully the crap out of this guy and just charge him. I put one hit into the 4502A, and you can see the T-54 is shooting at me, and I haven't detected him yet, but I know roughly where he is, and you can see his shells bouncing off me, and because I know where he is, I'm keeping my hull pointed at him so that any more shots from him will just bounce. And the 4502A gets really lucky that I only blow his track off right there, and the T-34 probably just put a big hit onto this guy. And I finish him off. And you can see the reversing that I was doing right there was just to throw off any possibility of him aiming at my lower plate. Right, now this T-54E1, I, I think they have a four-shot autoloader, but it might be five. There's one. Two. Damage my gun, I would pick it. Three. Four. That one, that one penned. And I just penned him for 405. Now my next shot is going to kill this guy, but is he going to be able to reload and damage me? No. He's unable to reload. T-34 kills him.
You may have noticed right there at the end that from my chat message, I was pretty upset. Um, that was a pretty massive carry. In fairness, um, in an IS-7 in a match like that, if I don't carry, I'm doing it wrong. But that was that was a massive carry. And that T-34 was just kill-stealing me the whole game. Um, so... I had five kills right there. I had the T-54E1 dead to rights. It was like two seconds away from reloading. Had won the game for my team. And I couldn't be allowed to get the Top Gun. I couldn't be allowed to get the JPE-100. So, like, no Top Gun, no Bolters medals for me. But all is not lost. Steel Wall. Everybody likes a Steel Wall. Five times experience for the first win of the day. 8,510 and during this special event there's three times crew experience for tier 10 heavy tanks so uh, excuse me about 25,000 experience for my crew that was really awesome you can see that was my mastery badge ace tanker in the IS-7 I haven't actually played that many games in my IS-7 because a lot of the time in random matches your team is like that T32 who was getting in my way while I tried to chase down the tier 10 because he wanted to get into the action doing you know doing stuff like driving backwards in a heavy tank to chase a medium like just get out of the way and let the people who are actually good at this game weigh it for you a lot of times they'll just abandon the tier 10s cuz you know obviously a tier 10 can look after itself right but you can see that I had a really good match. 108,930 credits earned. That's way above average. You can see right here, 6,236 damage done. Far and away the highest on the team. Our T110E4 only did 2,500 damage. That's uh, three shots. He did three shots. Our ISU152 did one. But uh, you can't expect much from Artie in a Ensk battle, so, I mean, I won't hold that against them. The T-34 did alright, 2,200 damage. You know, it was a tier 10 match, but really only three tanks in the battle weren't tier 8. So, even him with second highest damage, or second highest after the T-110, even that, it's not really a very strong showing. Uh, obviously, top experience, I did more than three times the damage of the next closest guy. Even with the uh, experience multiplier for shooting at higher tier vehicles, I blew these guys out of the water on experience. And as you can see here, 20 shots fired, 17 hits, 17 pens, 6,000 damage. Received 24 hits and for a potential damage of 8,100. So, you know, the IS-7 with only 2,100 health. People say the IS-7 is doesn't have a lot of resiliency, you know, whatever. Well, I just managed to sustain 8,000 damage, so that's... I think the IS-7 is quite resilient, it's just that... Um, when it gets flanked, it's in a lot of trouble. I managed to make a profit of 69,000 credits. You can see 15,000 for repairs, 22,000 for ammo. Uh, 1,500 for consumables. Pretty good, I'll definitely take that. <laughs> that was... That was a really fun match. The... IS-7 with its, if I'd been in my E-100 or my IS-4, uh, that match wouldn't have gone nearly as well. Um, those lower tier tanks would have just shot through my lower plate and done a lot of damage to me and probably set me on fire. Uh, the E-100's slow firing gun and low mobility would have made it difficult to reposition and keep reacting to the enemy breaking through in you know, three different places at three different times. Uh, the same thing goes for the IS-4. It's lower mobility. It would have been harder to react, but the, uh, the the armor on the IS-4 is pretty good. I'm not as good at employing it as the IS-7 armor, so I probably would have taken more damage. They might have actually killed me, but the gun on the IS-4 is awesome, so maybe I would have been able to, to bust out 7,000 damage. Who knows? But at any rate, that match was great. It was a really fun one. So until next time, Captain Dorja here with Captain Dorja's Armory. And uh, just remember, guys, you can never have enough big guns.